Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chu and today we're going to be covering a simple yet comprehensive four step process to having better 808 patterns. Step one is going to be laying down the simple pattern. Step two is going to be treating your 808 sample. Step three is going to be mixing your 808. And then step four is going to be adding complexity to the 808 pattern. Now, I don't wanna to do too much more talking cause this is another long tutorial. So let's just get right into it. Drop a like on this video if you end up learning something new or just end up enjoying the content and smack that subscribe button if it's still red so that I can buzz away in your pocket the next time I have some fire new content for you. Shout out to the comment winner who dropped the timestamps on the last video that was long. You are a goat, David. Thank you so much. I'm going to be doing that again. One person who watches the entire video and drops the best timestamp list is going to get every kit in my store and the Chew Method bundle 100% free. I'll hit you up on Instagram and I'll get it to you. Follow me on Instagram, join my Discord, and without further ado, let's get into the tutorial peace so one of the things you want to do when you think about creating an 808 pattern is the first thing you want to do is create a very simple pattern a lot of people or at least i used to think that the key to creating something dope was to make a super complex pattern right off the bat but i've noticed that i i personally get really caught up in the process um, of trying to do something like that and that deters me a lot in making the beat and a lot of times when I approach it that way I end up not even finishing the beat or the 808 pattern comes out super trash so one thing I've learned is to just really find the root note and make an interesting pattern just off the root note and then I'll do a lot of things to the 808 in terms of adjusting the envelope and the sample in general mixing it and stuff and then I'll come back afterwards and, and create a more interesting 808 pattern using maybe a few more notes and that way I don't disrupt the rest of my creative flow because I'm trying to make a good baseline so that's the first thing I'm going to demonstrate here so we're going to grab a sample from let's see let's see right let's grab a sample from the annihilate sample pack by Millie one which is free I'll probably just link it down in the description below let's go to some loops let's find something that sounds good Bro, there we go. And it's 140, my favorite BPM. Let's go. That's fire. Fire. One of the most fire loop kits, actually, that's out. This And especially it's free, bro. This shit is really worth like 40 or 50 bucks. So definitely grab that. I'm going to link it in the description below and probably link it in a card up above. So definitely check that out. But yeah, okay. Samples crazy. So the first thing we need to do... Is create a new pattern we'll call it 808 and you can create a new pattern by just clicking this plus naming your pattern hitting enter and then you can select the pattern by clicking this drop down selecting the pattern and then clicking it into the playlist so we're gonna whoops make sure that our grid is set to beat we're gonna drag it out to uh, eight yeah that's good and then we're gonna duplicate it over so you can duplicate it over by by pressing Control b and it'll duplicate it over you can do that by with anything basically like if you wanted to delete this duplicate this over you could do that and then i undo all of that just by pressing Control z it'll undo once and then the next time you press Control z it'll redo the thing that you undid if you want to undo several steps back hit Control plus alt plus z and then you can undo many steps in reverse like we just did so i'm going to Control b to duplicate that over and then we're going to start our 808 pattern. So I'm going to go grab an 808, probably just like a basic spin. Like when you're in doubt in terms of what 808 to use, just use the basic shit that everyone else uses. Like the two 808s that I always use when when I don't know what to do are the most common ones, which is the spins 808 or the like some variation of the Zay 808. So there's a bunch of those in this 14 drum kit. It's actually completely made <laughs> up of those. Um, so yeah. Or also another 808 that I use a lot is the Ready 808, which is actually... Holy shit, I might go with that, actually. It's the Ready 808, which if you've heard it, you know exactly what kind of 808 it is. This is the 808 that Wonder Girl uses like frequently. This is the 808 that you hear a lot in that new wave Toronto trap. And this is not like a unique 808. It was first, it can be traced back to, I believe, Cardiac's um, Heartline kit. Let me see if I can actually find it. Flatline, there we go, flatline. I believe it's called the Ready. There we go. He was, I think he actually made this 808. Either he made it or he was the first person to like grab it from Wonder Girl or whoever was using it and making it popular and then like disseminate it to the producer community. So that's as far back as I could trace that 808. But anyways, <laughs> so let's really, really get into this tutorial. Enough talking, enough talking. 
So we're gonna grab that from the centerfold drum kit. We're gonna get started. We're gonna grab the ready 808. And the first thing we need to do before we can even start laying down the pattern actually is we need to treat the sample just a little bit. First thing we need to do is figure out what key it's in so that when we play it, it'll be in key. So the way you do that is you open your sample in Edison in the audio editor, which is Edison in FL Studio. You come here to this little flag and click it and then click detect pitch regions. Now you can see that most of the 808 is in the key of D sharp. This is E because there are transients at the beginning of at the beginning of 808s to give it that punch that like kick punch so it's going to sound it's going to be in a different key than the main section of the 808 which is why that happens and you can adjust that which we'll talk about in a second if you want to but i like to keep it because again it adds that punch it adds some character to the 808 but now that we know that the pitch is in d sharp what we're going to do or you know e flat if you're fucking hard ass um you're gonna come here, so this is C, you're gonna come to this miscellaneous functions tab in the channel settings of your 808. And you're gonna come and see that it's always gonna be set to C automatically, but you wanna key it to what the actual pitch of the 808 is. So you're gonna count up C, C sharp, D, D sharp, or E flat, again, if you're a hard ass. And then you're gonna right click it to set it like that. So now that we've done that, now we can lay down our simple pattern, but I wanna show you one more thing and you can do this, you can adjust the pitch of the 808 like further if you want to, and you can do that by opening it up in new tone. Now, not everybody has access to new tone, which is why I didn't, I, this is not a mandatory thing for you to do, but if you do have access to new tone, this can help you further adjust the pitch of your 808. So we're gonna open it in a pitch corrector, which is new tone and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, you see how this shows you like how out of pitch it is basically. So you're gonna drag this down to get it in pitch. You wanna drag that from where it was, E to, to D. Then you wanna center it by turning this all the way and that'll get it right on D sharp. And then you can, you can do another thing which is you can reduce the variation, but for some reason that like, sometimes takes a lot of character out of the 808. So I don't like to do that, especially with these unique sounding 808s, like the Ready 808 and the Spins 808 and the Zay 808. Some other 808s, actually many other 808s, I'll do that because they're just all over the place because all the effects that producers have added to them. But normally these stock kind of good sounds, I don't change the variation too much because that keeps a lot of the character in it. So now that we've like really pitch corrected this the way we want in new tone, we can drag the sample in here and this will be our new pitch corrected 808 right here. So we're gonna come back and make sure that it's still in the same, we already know that it's D sharp, so we're just gonna come back and set that again. And now we can use this, we can go ahead and delete that, close new tone, and we can go ahead and start making our pattern. So we're gonna figure out what, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna ear test this because I'm, I'm decent at figuring out like the pitch of stuff, but if you, <laughs> If you don't know how to do that, it's something you should definitely practice. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So D, it's in D. You can just, just adjust it until it sounds like it's not out of key anymore. It takes a little bit of practice and sometimes you're gonna get it wrong, but the more you do it, the better you get at it to the point where you can literally do it like in a split second, kind of like I just did. So now I'm just gonna do a, a, an interesting sounding pattern just using D. I'm not gonna use any other notes. I'm gonna use D and then I'm gonna use the octave of D, which is just D. So I'm using D6, I'll go to D7. So I think this 808 is playing over itself. One thing you wanna make sure that your 808s are doing is cutting themselves. So the way you can do that, especially, you wanna do this with basically every 808 before you get started. I just happened to forget this time. But the way you can do that is you come back to your sample in the channel rack, right click it and click cut itself and make sure that it's checked. So now it's checked, so that won't happen anymore. That's especially good for these long 808s that run into each other. So each next note will cut the sample that the last note was playing, if that makes sense. I'm 
I'm gonna put some EQ on this sample real quick, just so it's not in the way of the 808. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase, I'm going to link the lengths of all the notes together. So basically, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you. It's a little bit difficult to explain. I'm gonna hit Control L in the pattern. I'm gonna place this last note so that this last note will also connect to this one and then I'll delete it. Hit Control L and it'll legato the notes. It's called legato so that they all connect. And the reason we're gonna do that is because next we wanna control the envelope of the notes. So we're gonna come into the envelope settings by going back to the channel rack, clicking on the sample, coming into the, whoops, <laughs> coming into the channel settings, going to envelope, which is right here. And then in order to control the lengths using the piano roll notes, we're gonna reduce all of these down to zero. And then we're gonna come back to this hold knob and turn it all the way up, which I'm sure you guys have seen that a bajillion times in tutorials by now. But it's like, it's actually, you wanna do that like basically every time because it's just really professional to control the lengths of your 808s. Like it's, it sounds super like not good when you don't do that. So now I'm gonna come back and adjust my pattern further based on the envelope settings that I've done. All right, so I am pretty content with that. So the last thing I wanna do, just so I don't have to talk about it later when we really get into things, is slides. So very simply, the way you can create an 808 slide is by grabbing a note, or just placing a note, really. Select the note size that you wanna go with to start. I usually like to start with a short note, and I'll, since I'm only using octaves right now, I'll just slide to an octave, but you can slide to any note. Place the note that you want to slide to above the note that you wanna slide from in the area that you wanna slide from. So while this note is playing, I wanna slide, when the clap will be playing, I wanna slide an octave higher and then I'll probably slide back down. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna double click the note and click this right here, which is literally called slide and you can see it. It'll come up right here in this little, what is this thing called? I don't know, this interface display that shows what, what is basically always going on in FL Studio. It'll display the word slide, and that's how you know which one to pick. I, uh, Portamento, I don't really know what that does, to be honest. Click slide, click accept, and you'll see this little triangle that appears, and you'll that's how you'll know it's a slide note. Now, the longer, so let's hear what that sounds like. So I want it to slide down. Also, I don't really, I'm gonna move it down an octave so we can really hear what it'll sound like. So then I want it to slide back down. So I'm gonna select that note so that I can replace it and I'll make it slide back down. Right, that's fire. So if you want a longer slide, just make the note longer. Or you can have it be really short. So the shorter it is, the faster the slide is gonna happen. So I actually like that, but I want this one to be like a little bit slower. So I'm gonna go like that. Uh, I'm gonna add another thing. So I want it to slide from really low and really quiet. This is another technique that I use. I'll slide from a silent note up to a note that is actually making noise. So I'll make this note silent and then I'll turn this into a slide note. 
And let's see how that sounds. All right, that's fire, but I want it to happen a little bit faster. I like that. And then I might move this up an octave and then slide back down very quickly here. Oof, okay, crazy. So before I start, you know, cause it gets so complicated when you start having fun with this shit and I really don't wanna like get all complicated right now. So I'm doing a lot. <laughs> I'm really doing a lot. I'm starting to have fun with this shit. Okay, so the next thing, basically the second to last thing we're gonna do in the in the four steps that we're basically approaching this as, the first step was laying down the simple pattern. The se second step was sample treatment, which is a little bit merged into the first step. The sample treatment includes finding the pitch, adjusting it in new tone if you have new tone, and then adjusting the level so that you can have a professional sound, kind of professional control over your 808. So next we're gonna talk about mixing, and then the last thing is gonna be tweaking. Um, the 808 pattern by adding extra notes when we come back in. So real quick, I'm just gonna add a drum pattern so that I can kind of show you how I mix relative to other things. I don't wanna just mix the 808 because it won't really make a lot of sense. And I'll, I'll probably fast forward through the beat making part of that. But yeah, I'm gonna get into that really quickly. Oh, but before I do, all these drum sounds are available for free in the 14 drum kit. So definitely grab that because it's fucking awesome. Also, all the mixer presets and everything that I'll use, you know, on the back end and a bunch of other mixer presets are also available for free in that kit. So if you don't have it, please grab it because it's literally fucking fire. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so we are, I'm done making the beat. Uh, it's pretty fucking far, I'm not gonna lie. And so now we're gonna get into mixing. So the first, just right off the bat, we're gonna talk about the 808 level because that is going to need to be your highest level, basically. Besides the kick, which I've heard recently is supposed to be leveled a little bit higher. Consensus is still out though. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna start with, yes, is the 808. So we're gonna bring all the levels down of everything that's in our mixer. And we're gonna start with 808. Now, I saw a tweet from Ali of TDE, Top Dog Entertainment, who mixes for like basically everybody in Top Dog Entertainment from Kendrick Lamar to SZA to Isaiah Rashad, basically everybody. And he said that the best place to level your 808 is negative 15 to negative 16 dBs, and then to level everything under that, including your kick, which is why some people say to level your kick above it, some people say level your kick with it, some people say level your kick under it. I found my best results leveling the kick with it, so that's what we're gonna go with. We might put it a little bit above depending on how it sounds, but yeah, let's get into that. So first we're gonna just bring this up until we're hitting it about negative 15. Now, let's talk about effects a little bit because that is a part of mixing. When the 808 is kind of a stock good sound like the Ready 808, I usually won't add effects but you know, sometimes I do, and I do wanna to demonstrate to you guys what that would look like. If you wanna see it more in depth, definitely go check out my mixing tutorial that I dropped last weekend. It's super fire, and it'll talk about this way more in depth. But I'll usually start off with an EQ, and I like to cut out those frequencies at negative, I mean, at <laughs> I like to cut out the frequencies under 30 hertz because they're just nonsense noise, really. So I'll cut those out, and I might, you know, EQ some of the, the high end a little bit just to control some of that warmth. And then I love adding Camel Crusher, which is just distortion. It's a distortion VST. You can use any distortion VST you want. I prefer Camel Crusher because I love this British clean preset. It just makes everything sound amazing on the low end. It's just so thick, so colorful. I love it. So both of these things are going to add a lot of amplitude back into your 808. So be sure to bring it back down to about negative 15. Be tweaking it as you go. And then I think the last thing we'll add is a limiter because a limiter because we'll talk about some side chaining in a second. We'll turn that off right now. And just make sure that peak doesn't really do too much above that ne that negative 15 dB range. So next we'll bring in the kick. Now 
maybe just a little bit above 15. I, I like the thickness of this kick. So now to get right into the side chaining, we're gonna side chain it. You can do that by clicking the kick and then clicking this arrow on the 808 and then clicking side chain to this track. Then we're gonna come back to this limiter, turn it back on and we're going to do the side chaining. So we're gonna come to the compressor, go to this side chain, drop down menu, select the, the item that we linked to side chain, which is the kick. And then we're gonna start adjusting the threshold until it begins to reduce the signal of the 808. Well, before we do that, actually, we need to turn the knee all the way up. Then we can adjust the threshold. And you'll see that this white trace creates a purple trace and that, it, that action is basically the the um, kick reducing the signal of the 808 every time it hits, which is the entire concept of side chaining. So we're gonna find a place that that's good. I want a little bit of attack, a little bit less release because I want it to release faster. And I think that sounds pretty good to me actually. Yeah, I like, I like that punch. So you can side chain the kick to a lot of things, which I do from beat to beat. It just kind of depends on the vibe. And you just use that same technique. Like I'll side chain the kick to the melody sometimes. I'll side chain the kick to the hi-hat sometimes. Just anything. Try it. You don't always have to side chain. Honestly, it's a stylistic choice. It was a long time where I did it. And then there was a long time where I didn't. And now I'm doing it a little bit more again. So it just depends on what you want. So now we're going to come in and we're going to level the snare at about the same place we did the kick. These heaviest sounds, you kind of want to be hitting all in about the same dB range. Maybe a little bit less than the 808 and a little bit less than the kick, but still pretty loud. You want that main snare to be audible, very audible. This accent snare, a little bit less. Uh, I, think that, uh, I think that's good. This is another accent snare. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, next we're gonna do this live hat. I want some more amplitude on this, so I'm gonna add some distortion. And then EQ it just a little bit. I like that. Next, we're gonna bring in this open hat. Then the high hats. I mean, that shit just sounds so tight. And then lastly, we're gonna bring in the melody. sounding a little dry so I'm gonna add some chorus go to the fat clean preset I'm gonna add some reverb from God's uh, the God's room preset and then which you can find in the 14 drum kit for free and then I'm going to add probably some delay the wider preset and then maybe another EQ just to tame some of those frequencies I don't want anything added extra from the reverb that I can't control. And then just adjust that. I want this to be more felt than heard, so I'm gonna reduce it a little bit. I like that, I like that a lot. Okay, cool. So. Mixing's done. The 808, this is really good to go. If you wanted to just keep the 808 pattern the way it is right now, I promise you'd be good to go. And in my honest opinion, you'd probably be better off because complexity will only get you so much. And it's it's complex, especially complex bass lines can be a real turnoff to um, artists, especially when they're like very melodic. It can be distracting and it can be a turnoff. So you want to be very careful. A lot of times producers feel like they have to do all this extra shit with the 808 and that's because they're trying to pr pr like impress other producers and while that is a it's not a bad goal you have to understand that if your goal is to make money 
making music, then you have to get that music to artists so the artists can get on it so that you can make money from the songs, make money from selling it to artists and then also make money from the song doing well. Um, nowhere in that does it have to, does it involve impressing other producers? Most, you have to realize that most other producers are trolls and they just want to make you feel like shit because they feel like shit about their own creations. Don't let that creep into your creative process. That being said, melodic 808 patterns are never a bad thing. I'm sure many of you have heard me say I love singing 808s. I will never not love it. Wonder Girl got me hooked on it. So I will always love 808 patterns like that. So now I'm going to kind of just show you guys my process for tweaking this 808 pattern to make it sound a little bit more characteristic. Right, so dra a, a little bit more complicated, a little bit, a few more notes, a few more slides, but you can see how it's still based off that core structure which we created using just the, the root note, which was D. So it's really important, at least in my process, and it's something that I would recommend to other producers, is to start really, really simple with the 808. It can be one of the most distracting parts of the process because it's like we're always thinking about it like how am i going to make the 808 smack what am i going to do just start with a simple pattern and come back to it the worst thing that you'll have happen is that you end up not being able to make a super complex 808 pattern you can always just stick with the root note which i think i saw boy band who is in internet money he said that like sometimes all you really need is that root note on the 808 and that's like facts bro that's like super, super duper facts. Like sometimes it's really just as simple as going with the root note. All the extra stuff is just extra stuff to really impress other producers who know what you're doing. The artist doesn't really care that much. As long as it smacks, as long as the 808 smacks, as long as the drum smack, as long as the melody is fire, bro, is really, everything else is really just from, is really just from your own creative like approach. And to some degree trying to impress other producers that you know are gonna hear the beat. But you don't wanna get, again, you don't wanna get too caught up in that. You really wanna think, how can I make this shit smack the most for the artist? Just keep it super simple. Fire melody, hard drums, thumping 808, and that's basically it. So I really hope you guys got a lot of benefit from this. I don't know how long this is gonna end up being. I'm gonna try to edit it down as much as possible. I don't wanna give you guys like another 50 minute tutorial. Um, but I really do hope you guys got a lot of benefit. This is one you guys have been asking for for a long time. Let me know like what other topics you want me to cover in these more like long form tutorials because I'm really trying to just get you guys as much helpful content as possible. Um, drop a like on this if you end up learning something new or if you just ended up like enjoying the content and listening to me talk. And definitely smack that subscribe button so I can buzz away in your pocket the next time I have a fire tutorial full of information for you. I hope you have an amazing day. I love you to death and I'll see you soon. Peace.